Now next come to the next three properties. The first one says that if you have two unsigned or complex measurable functions f and g, so they are either unsigned measurable or complex measurable, then the sum and the pointwise product are uh, pointwise sum and pointwise product are unsigned measurable or complex measurable. So because complex measurability depends on real measurability and which further depends on unsigned measurability. So we uh, it suffices to show the unsigned measurable case and the complex measurable case will follow. And here we can simply write for example f plus g f plus g and if you take the set f plus g greater than some constant lambda then this can be written as the union of the sets f uh, greater than some number q intersection f uh, sorry g then should be greater than lambda minus q and if you take q to be the rationals inside the extended reals then you get a countable union and each one of them is of these sets are measurable. So these are all measurable sets because f and g are measurable and so therefore f plus g is measurable. Now for the second part for the pointwise product first let suppose that f equal to g so if we can prove that f square is uh, measurable then the pointwise product of f with itself is measurable then we can deduce that f g is measurable I will show you how so first suppose that f equal to g and then we can write f square greater than lambda this set is equal to f greater than square root of lambda so because lambda is a non-negative real number the square root is un, uh, uh, unambiguously defined so this is measurable so this is measurable and so f square is measurable and now you can write f g as you can use the following formula f plus g whole square minus f minus g whole square and so first that the sum is measurable then the square is measurable and the uh, sum again this is a sum of two um, now no longer unsigned but nevertheless you can view it as a complex valued uh, measurable function and then you can take the square and so these are all measurable measurable and so the whole thing is measurable <coughs> of course the multiplication by a scalar does not affect measurability as well so this is measurable so this is the uh, sixth part uh, fifth sorry sixth part this is seven and this is eight and now if you take the seventh one for example if you take the supremum so you can take g greater than lambda as the union n greater than or equal to 1 and then you can take fn greater than lambda so the supremum greater than lambda means that at least one fn must be greater than lambda and the reverse uh, inclusion is obvious so uh, we have this equality when g is the supremum and similarly if you take h then h is uh, minus uh, the supremum of minus fn and so again we are reduced to the case of supremum of no longer unsigned but still complex measurable functions and so we have h is also measurable so both supremum and infimum are measurable functions now the lastly the if you have a pointwise limit of measurable functions each fn is unsigned measurable then f itself is unsigned measurable so let's see why this is true 
this is again simply because f x is the limit as n goes to infinity of f n x for each x. We have this formula and the limit is precisely well defined when you have equality of the limb soup and the limb inf. So, this is the limb soup in particular of f n x which is infimum over uh, k of the supremum of uh, n greater than or equal to k f k f n x. So, again this is a this part is measurable and this part is also measurable. So, the whole thing is measurable f is measurable. So, we see that we can deduce many uh, properties from the basic properties of measurable measurability. Now, let me define what are simple functions. So, uh, function s from x to the non-negative extended reals is called a simple function if the range of x takes on finitely many distinct values alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha n. So, of course, we have the immediate remark that uh, s is unsigned measurable measurable if and only if the sets a i which are the uh, pre images of these uh, values alpha i are measurable for each i. Each i in 1 to n. So, uh, if your s, if the function s uh, takes a constant value alpha i on a measurable set a i and your x can be written as, so of course, here x can be written as the union of uh, i equal to 1 to n a i then. So, if x can be decomposed into measurable sets a i finitely many such that um, a i. So, sorry this as a simple function we do not allow it to take the value plus infinity. So, it is only defined for uh, real non-negative real numbers, but not the extended real numbers. So, we only allow the sets a i where s x is a um, finite real number from 0 to infinity then this uh, sets are measurable and x can be decomposed as a union finite union of these a i's. In fact, they are going to be disjoint because uh, alpha i's are distinct. So, these are very much like the piecewise constant functions that we have dealt with when we were defining Riemann integrals. Uh, there we had boxes uh, the piecewise constant function uh, take took on a constant value over a partition. The partitioning was uh, uh, for boxes only, but here I, we are allowing partitions with uh, Lebesgue uh, with measurable sets a i and then it is uh, more or less the same definition as a piecewise constant function. So, a simple measurable function is very useful uh, in measure theory because of the following lemma because if f is an unsigned measurable function unsigned measurable function then there exists a sequence s n of measurable function of simple measurable functions measurable functions such that first part is that it is a an increasing sequence of uh, non negative measurable functions 
and bounded above by f and the second part is that uh, the limit of these measurable functions is precisely the function f. So, uh, S n converges to f point wise uh, on x. So, this kind of uh, result says that uh, any measurable unsigned measurable functions can be approximated by simple measurable functions. So, let us see the proof or the rather the sketch of the proof. So, first of all define functions phi n from 0 plus infinity to 0 plus infinity as follows. So, we define phi n of an extended real number t if 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to some uh, is less than or equal to this uh, n where n is this uh, index here then we can find a, a natural number k such that k over 2 to the power n is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to k plus 1 by 2 to the power n and in this case we write it this as k. So, for each t in this interval 0 to n uh, less than n we find an interval. So, we sub subdivide this interval 0 to n into equal intervals of length 1 over 2 to the power n and our t will lie in one of these intervals and we find this uh, index k uh, such that k by t to the power n is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to k plus 1 by 2 to the power n. So, we are taking this value k here uh, where t lies between k by 2 to the power n and k plus 1 by k, k plus 1 by 2 to the power n. And then if t, uh, t is greater than or equal to n, we just set it as n. So, first note that phi n inverse of a Borel set in 0 plus infinity is a Borel set in 0 plus infinity. In other words, phi n is a Borel function, phi n is a Borel function. And secondly, that uh, for any t and so t in 0 plus infinity and n greater than or equal to 1, we have the inequality t minus 1 by 2 to the power n is less than or equal to phi and t is less than or equal to t. Which means that as n goes to infinity, phi n t converges to the function identity function t. And thirdly that if we set S n of x is equal to phi n of f x for x in x, then this is the uh, sequence of functions that we want. This is a simple function because it can be written as a sum k equal to 1 to uh, n times 2 to the power n. Here n times 2 to the power n is the number of sub intervals that of uh, length 1 by 2 to the power n that we are dividing into uh, for the set 0 to n. So, we have k equal to 1 to uh, n times 2 to the power n of this value 
k over 2 to the power n so sorry this should be k over 2 to the power n and uh, then you are multiplying by the uh, indicator function of the inverse image of precisely uh, these intervals k by 2 to the power n uh, k plus 1 by 2 to the power n. So, here again there should be a strictly less than sign. So, these are all Borel sets. So, this these are all measurable functions. The indicator functions are all measurable functions and plus you have n times chi of the set n plus infinity. So, <coughs> this is a finite sum of uh, indicator functions of measurable subsets of uh, x. So, this again should be f inverse of n plus infinity. So, these are all measurable, these are all measurable and so these are uh, this s n x is a simple function and it is easy to show that uh, s n x is less than or equal to s n plus 1 x. So, this proves part a and the limit of s n x as n goes to infinity is equal to the limit of n goes to infinity phi n of f x and this is precisely equal to f x as phi n t converges to the identity function t.